morning. So today we're going to be talking about superchargers and water to air versus air to air. This is Blake's Nismo 370Z. We're going to be dynoing it with the existing still in water to air supercharger kit. We're going to be installing a Soho Motorsports air to air kit with some basic supporting mods, retuning the car on Ecutech, and then we're going to compare the power difference. So a couple of uh, quick things about how a water to air system works. Uh, come up here real fast. The water to air system on the basic still in supercharger kit uh, cools the intake charge using coolant. So if you want to come in here real fast, you'll see the supercharger unit right here will be for is forcing air into the intake pipe or into the charge pipe, excuse me. And then in the manifold, you'll have a little uh, heat exchanger that coolant is being ran through on these hoses. So that has an electric water pump that pumps coolant through this little through this little plate to cool the air coming from the supercharger. Obviously the, the, the charge air from the supercharger is extremely hot coming out of the supercharger. So when you, when you are ramming it into the manifold, you have to cool it down. Now, this is a little bit restrictive uh, when you start to try to make uh, more power. So what, we're, what we usually do and what's been really popular the last two or three years has been converting it to an air to air intercooler where the intercooler goes in the front. Now, that's what we're gonna be doing on this car and we're gonna be showing you the, the difference in power as well as the uh, difference in consistency of how, how repeatable those power numbers are. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick uh, baseline with the Stillen kit water to air and uh, just get the car up to operating temp, do a quick pull with the tune that was on it. We're not doing any tuning, this is straight from however it came. And then uh, we're gonna look at the dynograph, check AFR, and we'll go over how much power it's making and any potential issues. This is what the initial baseline did. The final numbers were on this kit was 376 horsepower and 294 torque. The air fuel ratio chart is on the bottom. It actually doesn't look too bad. It looks like it has, it dips down to kind of rich, like 1090 around peak torque and then levels out to 11.7 up top, which is pretty good, not bad. Um, it does look like it's pulling a little bit of timing because of how much chop is in the graph, but we're, since we're going to be putting an air-to-air -air kit on, it's going to completely, uh, it's going to require a completely new tune. We're actually going to remove uprev and we're going to put it on Ecutech instead, so we can use a speed density fueling strategy and everything else that comes with using that software. Another quick note: uh, we're going to be using the uncorrected weather correction for this as long as the weather stays about the same. You can see the weather is at 70 degrees with around 50% humidity. So as long as the temperature stays about the same, we're going to use uncorrected numbers so the power figures don't get distorted by the weather correction. We're gonna take the car off the dyno now. We're gonna see, we're gonna start taking it apart and then we will uh, put the car back on the dyno after installing everything and see what it makes. Stupid. Long tube headers going on, taking the water to air kit off and doing an external slave with the C-Mac on Blake's Nismo 370. Make some really good power once it all comes back together. This is it running right now. It's uh, got the Soho intercooler, like we explained before. All new charge pipe. Uh, vent to atmosphere blow off valve from the tile right here. It sounds really good.
We've got a base map on the car. It's running good. Just gonna get it to operating temp. And we're gonna make a few runs. We're gonna be data logging drivability and stuff first. Fuel trims are nice and tight at idle already, but the car is still too cold to make a hit. So we're just gonna be checking everything else out, driving, doing some driving and making sure everything's healthy. So coolant temp is coming up, oil temp is coming up. I'm just gonna make a partial hit to check boost and AFR, see how far off we are. So let's pull up our basic parameters here to start with. We have air fuel, RPM, boost, just to see what this first revision is looking like. This portion right here is where I stomp on it. So the first two charts are air fuel. The third chart is a boost gauge. I set up a boost gauge as a custom channel on EcuTech which we do on all of our tunes now, as of uh, a few months ago. So it looks like around, the air fuel is pretty flat at around like 11.5 to 11.7 all the way across, um, which is about what I usually run a boosted car to. On a supercharged car, you can actually lean it out a little bit more, but this customer is gonna be going home to 91 octane fuel, so we can't really milk it that hard. Um, you'll see the third chart right here. Um, I'm seeing about six PSI of boost before 5,000 RPM, which is pretty good. Um, no slip yet. You'll see the boost building straight up, peaking at about 8.6 by 5,600 RPM. Um, this bottom chart is just manifold absolute pressure, which is just boost. It's just boost, uh, just a different unit. So looks decent so far. All right, so we're gonna make a full pass now. Uh, we'll start around 3,500 RPM and see how much horsepower it makes. Okay, so right now we're, this is where we're at. So as you guys remember before, your, uh, the water to air kit made 376 horsepower, 294 torque. And then our baseline on the first revision for the air to air setup uh, made 486 horsepower. So I already picked up 110 horsepower before with a super conservative tune. And then 389 foot pounds, so nearly 100 foot pounds more torque. AFR chart. And the red line is with the old tune. Not sure who tuned it. Like I said in, uh, in the introduction to this video, the air fuel was, was not too far off. Uh, you'll see with mine, um, with retuning it, uh, it actually kind of starts out leaner than the uh, previous tune. It's not unsafe, but basically while the blower is winding up and making boosts, you can still kind of trim it out a little bit um, and make more power there while the blower is not hitting peak boost yet. I didn't rev it out all the way, but you can tell you do. we do have a little bit of belt slip going on right here where the power ramps up and then dips down. Uh, this is corroborated by the data log that I pulled up. 
So you'll see how boost on this graph, it'll peak, drop down, and then try to ramp up again. This happens sometimes on the first hit on a blower car just because the, uh, the belt's not warmed up all the way yet. So I'm gonna make another pass as is, and then uh, we'll record the numbers again. Um, the belt hooked up a little bit more and it made 500 wheel horsepower on the dot a little bit more torque overall decent gain so far the only thing is we could probably push it more but 91 octane is the is the main thing here that's uh, the main concern so I'm going to add a little bit of timing make one more adjustment and then uh, see what it makes <laughs> So this is the finalized uh, figures for this car, this project right here. Final numbers was it's 514 wheel horsepower with 405 foot-pounds of torque. This is pretty much the limit for this specific combo. So what I mean by that is that with this car, with the fuel that we're running, the blower that he has and everything like that, this is basically all it's going to make. Um, air fuel ratio has stayed the same again obviously going div uh, diverting from this target air fuel ratio is not going to benefit power or safety and we're going to check boost again real quick just to make sure the so boost level is hanging steadily at 12 psi or 11 psi it looks like so this is pretty common for this specific blower this is a an older supercharger unit it's a vortec v3 sci um, all of the new air to air kits are using a vortec v3 si from soho so um, those will make more power so this is pretty much right at the knock limit it did make a smooth pass and it did make more power but we're going to take it down just one degree of timing bring it back down so it's a comfortable 500 wheel horsepower on 91. okay so pretty detailed breakdown of run by run uh tuning this car so we're just going to wrap it all up nicely with the gains so like i had mentioned before the baseline with the water to air kit was 376 horsepower um, our first run with a conservative tune um, brought the power up to 486 horsepower. There was some belt slip also on this run, um, but everything on the tuning side looked fine. Now, I made another run right afterwards um, where the power increased to uh, 500, and with no other change, I just made another hit. Um, you can see right here where the belt tightened up because this dip on the blue line where it lost boost, it recovered on the next run so we actually picked up 30 horsepower right there went from 469 to 499 horsepower so that's a pretty good increase just off of uh making sure it's making the correct boost alone then adding a little bit of ignition timing and then also smoothing out the valve timing which got us a smoother mid-range you'll see how there's dips right here um getting all that stuff recalibrated on the next run definitely helped and that's on this orange line right here so you'll see right here it doesn't scoop down as much and then it gives you just a nice flat power band on top. And then your total peak gain from the baseline is 469, but then the power increased to 514. So that's another like 45 more horsepower. And then the total overall gains between when the car first came in to what it's leaving with were pretty substantial. So right here, I highlighted where it picked up the most amount of power, where it went from 371 to 514. And that's, so that's like 140 horsepower increase. So a really big increase way towards red line you went from 100 369 to 498 so that's 130 more horsepower increase so it's a substantial increase just basically going air to air and then doing some basic supporting mods like the fuel system injectors and pump things like that 
So the kind of the biggest issue with this car was just the fuel quality on 93, we could probably make a little bit more, but, and then on E85, you could definitely make a lot more as well as the older supercharger unit. Like I said before, this is the SCI, the SIs will make a lot more power. This is a kind of a great example of just doing the whole setup and then showing you the difference, massive difference. Thanks to Kinetic Motorsport for putting it together and um, it turned out really great. So thanks for watching.